Well, hey there, guys. It's been a while. Today, we're going to do some tine weeding. So this is a very crucial first pass on our corn fields. Um, so this field was planted, oh boy, two, three days ago, two days ago. Um, it's a pretty big field. We got Lucas going up there in a tine weeder and I'm gonna start in this south side. So these are 60 foot Hudson Bickler tine weeders. I know I've done videos over them, but if you're new to the channel, here's what they look like. Also, if you're new to the channel, my name is Thomas. Me and my family run a organic row crop farming something something farm. And one second, I'm gonna hop in the tractor. Anyway, like I was saying, my name is Thomas. Me and my family, we run a organic row crop farming operation in Northwest Iowa. And we have been doing this for over 20 years. And we grow corn, organic soybeans, and oats. Um, I hope you guys, if you're new to the channel, enjoy watching our videos. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And now that we got that out of the way, we can start tine weeding. Well, before we do that, we have to get this set up correctly. Say hi to your dad, Lucas. How you doing? <laughs> what we got going on here? So on these tine weeders, you can see the middle is definitely higher than the outside. And that's not good because when we're going across the field, we want this to be completely even. That way it's doing an even job. And when I said this is a really crucial part of our weed control lineup, it was a lion. So the corn, since it's two days, should be pretty set in the bed. You know what? I should probably get my gloves for this, but it should be pretty set in the bed. So the idea is, well, it's about three, four inches in the ground, um, that these will go across about two and a half to three inches, you know, just above that seed bed before it gets uh, germinated and starts to poke through. And then this first pass will knock out the top layer of weeds and knock them back while that corn starts to germinate and pop through. So it is really important, but if you don't have it set correctly, you can uh, pluck out seed even if you're going too deep or just move it around in the seed bed. So really important to have these set correctly. And for those curious, I'm running an 8310 RT and Lucas is running an 8320 RT. So they're gonna go make a round in that tractor just to make sure everything's set right. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this and what you have to look for when you tine weed and how we adjust them. So first things first, I don't know how well you guys can see, but these tines can sometimes get, you know, caught behind another tine. So if they roll over, you hit a rock or something, I'll grab the camera real fast and show you guys what I'm doing. I crossed one because this sometimes happens in the field. And it's kind of hard to see from the tractor cab, but usually there'll be like a, it'll be a darker line of dirt and you can sell something's wrong. But right here is what I'm talking about. You can see these two tines are crossed, which means this one has a lot of down pressure on it. So then every once in a while, I usually get out and check and I just take it off it like that. And then they can be caught on these bolts on the side of these right here. This is the um, tilt you can tilt these more aggressive or more flat right now. They're all flat and for first pass That's what we run just because if you have it straight up and down and have all that pressure on it You're probably going to pluck out corn or move it around in the seed bed And as far as adjusting it goes you have these tires which you can take out these pins move it up and down that doesn't do everything but that is one thing we'll do and then Let's see, where else? There's cylinders you can, these you can twist. Uh, there's just a lot of bolts and stuff outside on the implement 
that you can uh, adjust to get it set just how you want it. All right, so I just walked behind their pass they just took. You can see one, two, three. Corn is still in its seed bed and they're digging around. You can't really see it super well, but it's an inch above that seed bed. So that's, I mean, that's perfect. Everything above it worked out pretty good. Nice and loose, moved it around. Um, finding a lot of worms, a lot of white roots. So that's, that's perfect. And if you didn't notice, got a glove. So now, now we're really farming. Anyway, that's kind of what the work looks like it's doing. Found some garbage. We're just on top of it today, especially for a Saturday. Usually Saturdays you're just, you know, ready to be done for the week. Don't get me wrong, I am. But yeah, it's gonna be a good day. Hopefully we can get this field done. This field's a big field. I think it's over 400-ish acres. We can check the app and double check and I'll get back to you. But we're gonna try to get this field done and then I believe a quarter back east. We even found a flag. Being productive. See, if you were a no-till guy, you never would have found that stuff until you started planting. And then you would have to stop your planter and pick up the trash. That was a, that was a joke. If you do no-till, good for you. Anywho, little update on how planting is going. We have 600-ish acres left of corn down here, I believe, at Lake Park's done. I think they had one field yesterday and they knocked it out. Um, so we'll be moving on to beans, hopefully next week. Soybeans, organic soybeans. Um, most of that is food grade, I believe. So if you like tofu, you're welcome. I've never had it. I've heard it's actually not that good. But uh, anyway, <laughs> we got a little bit of corn left, but the fields that we have left to plant are way, way, way too wet. I actually got stuck yesterday. But no, I do not want to talk about it. Found a rock. Look at me being productive. Anyway, the last couple fields are way too wet to get in with the planters. So hopefully over the weekend, there's no rain in the forecast. So it should be able to go Monday. We can finish up corn, move on to soybeans. And as you can see at the same time, we're doing weed control. We also have some rotary hose going, which Jack showed you guys a little bit yesterday. I'll definitely do a more in-depth video of it. But, uh, and then we're tine weeding. So, a whole bunch of organic farming going on today. So I hope you guys enjoy learning about that. Well, we got all the adjustments done that we needed to. We also put on a, a power link for the three-point so I can, you know, manage the tilt of the three-point, which is kind of crucial when you're doing things like this. But we are finally, <laughs> finally gonna be going Pine weeding. It's about 11 o'clock. We got a lot to do today, so hopefully we can get it all done. One more thing I'll talk about throughout the year: doing the same passes that the planter did is very, very, very important. Like following in the same path that the the planter guy did when he was planting is very important because we run over our fields about. 10 times probably with just row crop cultivation, tine weeders, um, rotary hose throughout the summer. So that's a lot, a lot of compaction on the end rows and in the rows. So we try to stay or we do stay in the exact same row for every single pass or turn track. That way by middle of July, you can see every turn track perfectly. Um, it's everything's lined up so that way obviously the new person comes into the operation um, it's a lot easier to see instead of just I mean I know that's the same for sprayers too you're always in the same turn track but it's just very 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 important for us and people that do a lot of passes on their crops to always be in the same same tracks I guess just a little bit I'll probably mention that a bunch more times throughout the summer but there's number one it's also very very important on these end rows especially when you have the turn tracks it's I mean it's not a super big rut but especially in these time readers for the first pass you want to make sure you go really slow so the time reader doesn't bounce up and down because then obviously you could have the possibility of poking out that corn so 
on the end rows, I go about five-ish, whatever, wherever it's not bouncing in here. I'll quick turn this around. So right now you can see it's not bouncing. What I'm talking about is those, those turn tracks. When we go across, I don't want any of those to bounce. So I bounce a little bit there, I'll slow down just so I'm not plugging out any corn. Right now I'm going about 3.5. You guys can see that, but making sure we don't bounce on the end rows so we don't plug out any corn is a very big thing to watch for when you're doing tine weeding. Another big thing is backing into corners when doing this kind of stuff. Um, obviously when you pull into a corner, you're not gonna be able to go all the way unless you own the field next to it or something. But nine times out of 10, you're not gonna be able to do that. So what I'm doing right now is I just did a pass along the road and now I turn into the next row. It's kind of hard to explain when you're looking at me, <laughs> but I'm, I'm backing into every corner um, that, I, that I have to so we get every last bit of corn tine weeded because if you don't, then obviously your corner is gonna be a complete mess um, by the middle of June and you're never gonna kill those weeds and the hand weeder guys will not like you. So I'm gonna back in every corner because that is gonna kill the most weeds. Now we do have auto path set up in some of the tractors. Um, this tractor does not have auto path, which is awful for me, but it's okay because I remember, or I think, not remember, I think I can figure out how they planted this field. I talked to Jacob a little bit about where he started and Lucas has been going back and forth or east and west quite a bit. So I'm just gonna not drive anywhere that doesn't have tracks. And that's a really easy way to figure out where you're supposed to be. If you're driving somewhere where there's not tracks, that's probably not the route the planter took. So for any of you guys out there that tine wheat or possibly maybe even someday will come work for us, <laughs> If you're driving somewhere with no tracks, you're not in the right spot. And probably ask a question, or probably just ask a question. That's a really good way to figure out what to do, is just ask. But don't get me wrong, I'm gonna tell you guys a story by the time that I did pretty much an entire field, not correctly. So I was in high school probably, didn't really care for farming whatsoever. Um, I pulled into a field with a uh, tine weeder actually, very first tine weeding past the season, which is actually pretty lucky for me. Um, anyway, I lined up on the south road of a field and then I started going back and forth. I did the ends last, but the field had two different lines. So there was a line for the south fence and there was a line for the north fence. And yours truly, not thinking anything of it, didn't really, didn't really even think about it, I did pretty much the entire field without switching the line. And, but I mean, maybe it was a, a round, so not the whole field. Luckily, my dad was driving past and told me, hey, should probably switch the line because it switches. So I'm not perfect <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll admit that and I have a lot of learning to do, but I figured, you know what? That's a great moment to look back on and say, I, I don't do everything right all the time either. So if we have a new employee or somebody that's learning, it's very, I, I try to have a lot of patience because I know I was like that when I was learning, and I still am learning, and I still make mistakes. I got stuck yesterday in a field cultivator. I know better than that. I shouldn't have went in the wet spot, but I did, and I got stuck. Luckily, I got out. But anyway, moral of the story is, you're never gonna be good enough at something that you can't learn or just get better at. So, whatever you do, if you farm, I promise you there's someone that knows more about it than you. Um, it's probably not gonna be me. Jack might say he knows the most, which granted he, he, he does know quite a bit. And I've learned a lot from him and my brothers. But humble yourself, learn, learn something new. And if you are learning something, 
listen to the person that knows the most about it and uh, never be too, I don't know, stuck up to ask questions about something if you are learning. Anyway, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Let's get back to time again. Or as you could say, the meat and potatoes of organic farming. Also, if you don't have one of these things, a heated lunchbox, I don't know what you're doing. If you farm or, or have a job where you don't have a microwave, which honestly, that'd be really nice in a tractor. John Deere, if you're watching this, you should put microwaves in your tractor. I mean, you already have massage chairs and fridges. I feel like the next logical step would be a microwave, but maybe I'm wrong. Bussin or whatever the kids say nowadays. Anyway, I'm gonna eat and do some organic farm because that's what life is all about. Well, that's what having auto steer is all about. That would have sucked back in the day. Aha! You couldn't have eaten and drove. I mean, you probably could have put like a stick. I don't know if they even had sticks back in those days. I don't know. I'm lucky to have autos track. That's all I know. And spinning goes slower. Because I think you were spinning too fast or, you know, for, if you spin, then you're just digging down. Okay. Sam got stuck. <laughs> Check the Instagram. <laughs> in this video post, there'll be a picture on the Instagram of, of Sam stuck. But, like I said before, everyone makes mistakes. I did it yesterday, but I, I will say I didn't have to be towed out, so I got that on them yet, but yeah, that's fun and exciting. Alrighty, I'm going to hop out here, doing some end rows, make sure I'm not plucking out any corn. Alright, we found a row here, we'll dig down, you can see we're taking off the top, I don't know, moving on the top three two and a half inches give or take try to find some some corn hopefully I'm digging in the right spot otherwise I'm just gonna get my hands dirty for absolutely nothing which is always fun here we go there's one seed it, 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 we did get it planted in some moisture so that that was really good for the corn oh whenever I turn the camera on I dig for corn I never find any so we're gonna oh there we go there's one more it's still in the seed bed so that's good we're not we're not moving on too much corn and you can see right now I'm kind of one row away from the tracks I'm gonna come out to the ends and make sure they're not digging up any corn and still intact so that's that's perfect and I'll just kind of walk around make sure nothing's cracked bent or broken because you know on this channel we love to do that. Oh boy. If I'm being honest, blind pine reading is probably one of my least least favorite things to do in the field. Just because obviously you can't really see if you're damaging anything. I mean you can get out and check as much as you want and adjust things, but the ground changes, you just everything changes from even pass to pass on the field. So I, I just I've never really found it. <laughs> I guess it's probably not meant to be relaxing. Or uh, but it is productive and it does do a lot of good for our crops. So it's good for the field, so it means it's good for me too. But it's still not very fun. But if you are watching this video right now and you're a farmer. Comment how you're going. How you're going. Comment how your your farm year. Your year of farming. Planting. Comment how your planting's going. If you're done planting, how much you got left, how the weather is there, all that good stuff. Tell me in the comments how your farming of year, your farming's going. Getting really good at this whole whole YouTube thing. I guess Lucas didn't want to play chicken. Here's what I'm talking about on the end rows with the bouncing. You want to make sure it's not. You can see the planter kind of crisscrossed right there. So I got to go. Only going about three and a half. It's making sure it doesn't bounce up and down and pluck out the corn. In other news, I just listened to the uh, 
the entire Moana soundtrack. So that's cool. When folding these these up, you gotta make sure you go real slow because all those I'll hop out and show you guys, but it's really easy to rip off those hoses. Maybe should have lowered it a little bit. But these these things right here, down pressure or the tilt for the tines, those rip off really easy. Or they can if you're not careful. So that's a big thing you gotta watch for when you're folding these up. But we're all folded up. So let's get on the road and get headed to the next field. Well, everybody that is going to do it for today's video on the tine weeder hope you enjoyed today's video if you did leave a like uh, if you want to see more farming content like this and how we farm organically subscribe we'll be posting a bunch of videos as the real organic farming aspect of our operation is starting with all the tine weeding the rotary hoeing and eventually row crop cultivating so uh don't know what we're going to do next, but we'll catch you in the next one. Also, comment if you want to see something specifically. Okay.